Okay, super. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M C C A R T H Y S at AmherstMA.gov. No in person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.07 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Hallie? Here. Gaston? Here. And I'm here. That is three present with two absent. Um, so let's go into public comment. And this is... <laughs> general public comment um, unrelated to anything on the agenda. So if anyone is here for general public comment, please raise your hand by hitting the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And I think no one is here for general public comment. So we'll go on to new pouring license applications, White Lion LLC doing business as White Lion Brewery, 24 North, North Pleasant Street. And we have uh, Mr. Mr. Ray, Ray? Is that you? Hi. Hi. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, Ray Berry, uh, president, founder of White Lion Brewing Company, uh, based or started in Springfield and hoping to land in Amherst, Massachusetts. So thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share a little bit about what we're trying to do and uh, go through the liquor license uh, process. Great, thank you. Um, so everyone got a copy of the application packet, is that right? And Steve, you said everything has been turned in? Yes, so this is, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a bit of a um, unusual application for us and that okay. it is actually the pouring license addendum to a farmer brewery license rather than a okay. on quota liquor license. So we have not okay. had one of those in our time, but the uh, license application is, uh, I won't even say similar because it's pretty much the same. Okay. All right, great. Thank you very much. Um, was there anything else you wanted to say about your business or about the application um, before we launch into questions? <laughs> so, no, thank, you for, thank you again. Um, Stephen has been great through the entire process, knowing that this was going to be something new and different for not only him, the department, but also the commissioners. Uh, we've been through this process in Springfield to Stephen's point, we are not going to be pouring all alcohol. We are approved by the TTB and the uh, pending ABCC approval based off of your disposition to pour what we brew on site. So in Springfield, we brew beer and hard seltzer. And our intent in Amherst with a much smaller system uh, to, uh, to brew beer and hard seltzer also on site. Obviously, the site will also maintain a non-alcoholic portfolio. Uh, we serve juices, sodas, and a fan favorite in Springfield, a probiotic kombucha tea. Oh, um, wow. so we try to keep a robust enough portfolio for the robust amount of pallets that are out there. Um, once your commission approves uh, and we move forward through the other steps in the process with town hall, um, you can expect to see up to 10 to 12 different variations of beer. Uh, we would have, or we will have a kitchen. The kitchen will mirror what we do in Springfield. We have a partnership with Highbrow Restaurant, which is a restaurant in Northampton. Uh, he acts as our food consultant. Um, if you are a fan of ribs, we have a very fan favorite in Springfield, our sticky ribs, uh, which is uh, our leading seller relative to food. Um, our hours of operation will differ than the hours of operation in Springfield. We see Amherst as a much more robust downtown community that exercises not only the business community, but also the educational and residential 
population. There's also a groundswell of new establishments opening up right on Main Street. And we're very happy to see that and want to be part of that mosaic that's being created in downtown, Am in downtown Amherst. In Springfield, we operate Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, our intent in Amherst is to operate um, Monday uh, through Sunday. Uh, and incorporate a lunchtime uh, environment where we afford folks an opportunity to come in during the early afternoon hours and enjoy some of the food that we'll be offering out of the kitchen. In Springfield, we close uh, on average at 9 to 9.30 p.m. In Amherst, we're proposing to have a hybrid um, closing Weekends, uh, like a Sunday, would be 7 p.m. Uh, Monday and Tuesday would be 9 p.m. And your Wednesday through Saturday, uh, 12.30 a.m. Um, we do or will be catering to primarily a different crowd than some of the um, sister or brother bars in downtown. We don't look at ourselves as a bar. We are a brewery that just so happens to um, serve beverages that we brew on site. So we're not looking to, we're looking to have a robust uh, attraction for uh, families, for individuals, whomever it may be. Um, at the end of the day, it's a family-friendly establishment. That's the catering that we do in Springfield, and that's just an extension of what we want to do in Amherst. We also harp on being part of the community fabric. Um, the, the genesis of White Lion is built on community. A lot of people ask about what is White Lion. White Lion is a symbol of good for humankind. It is an extension beyond race, color, creed, or gender. It doesn't matter where you come from, at the end of the day, it's about sharing in a common experience. So when I talk or when our team speaks about being part of the fabric of Amherst, that is truly what we're talking about, being part of the fabric, being part of all corners and allowing everyone to come in and be part of the white line experience. Uh, and we've been able to demonstrate and do that and model the way and move the needle in the right direction uh, out of our Springfield location. It's no secret, and this is really just more of a point of information, it's no secret that there are a very small number of black and brown owned breweries in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, there's less than 1% owned in the United States. And there's over 9,000 breweries in the United States. So we try to bring in and create a level of inclusion, everyone into the fold. Um, and uh, we look forward to doing that in the fabric or part of the fabric of Amherst. Um, our location is part of the old um, High Horse, the old Amherst Brewing. Uh, unique that, you know, Barry, his ownership group have changed the dynamic in that space and have divided it up. Uh, it was much more attractive for us to look at 5,600 square feet versus 20,000 square feet. It's a blessing to have the Drake above us providing great entertainment in downtown. DP Doe, uh, will be next to us. Our brewer, my partner, business partner, started at Amherst Brewing in that very location. He's a UMass grad. He is excited to come full circle and uh, brew there again. Uh, he used to be the head brewer for Amherst Brewing. So uh, there's a lot of uh, connectivity, um, partnership with Marcus Canby, bringing his brand back, co-branding it with White Lion, adding more excitement to the, to the UMass campus and and just the whole ecosystem. So there's a number of moving parts, but we're happy to be part of that ongoing developing, developing conversation in downtown Amherst. Terrific, thank you. Um, great, does anyone have a question or comment or anything about the license application? Gaston? Sure, well, first, uh, thank you for bringing so much uh, intentionality to the downtown and to your business and your, you know, community work, um, uh, we're, you know, fortunate to to have you bring that to to that space. And um, my question really is, if you could walk us through what your um, carding 
practices will be given that you're have a dual <coughs> you know function let's say um and uh that's that's the first main question i have great question i used to sit in the exact same seats that you sit in in the city of springfield as a former liquor license commissioner and i understand the importance of making sure if it's an uh, outdoor event you have a controlled environment if it's indoor that you have the appropriate protocols and practices in place so if something were to happen you'll be able to utilize those practices and policies and be able to address that accordingly with town officials so we will be utilizing a card system that has been recommended to us by uh, the business improvement district gabrielle gold uh, we'll be investing in that we know that we would not be able to open our doors without that being in place. So we are uh, in the process of onboarding that prior to opening. Um, so we're, you know, we look forward to putting uh, practices in place that protect everyone. Uh, White Lion, um, the town of Amherst, and even the individual that thinks that they may be able to get away with something, we catch that moment. We're also protecting them short-term, long-term. Uh, thank you so much, um, uh, Ray. And so, when you walk when you walk in, do you get carded? And oh, I'm sorry. Yes, great. I, I apologize. Tables. Yes. Yeah. And, so, and when you walk in, yeah. So the establishment, as I had um, shared, is family friendly. Yeah. Uh, I'll obviously defer to what your recommendations are, but we don't want to be in a position where every time someone opens a door, we have someone standing there and they right. have to be carded. Right? Exactly. We want to have the child, the teenager to come in and have a burger, right? But if they approach the bar, first of all, no one under the age of 21 can be sitting at the bar, one. Two, if they approach the bar, um, that's when the carding system kicks in. Or if we move to a table and ask for an order, that's when the carding system kicks into play. Okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Um, okay, any other questions? So are you the, are you, I'm just trying to, I'm looking through the application. Are you the manager on site for this one, Mr. Berry, or? I'm the manager of record. Um, of record, okay. And, absolutely, and if that changes in the future, we will go through the appropriate okay. channels uh, okay. to make those changes. Okay, great, yeah, I just wasn't, yeah, I thought it, that's what I, I saw. All right, super, thank you so much. Um, any other questions? Hey, could Harry. you please just uh, restate the hours with the opening and closing times for each day? Sure. So this will be a Monday through Sunday, and this is all fluid. These can change, and we would make the appropriate changes in front of town hall. Mm -hmm. But the objective is a Monday through Sunday environment, Mondays, uh, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., Tuesday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Thursday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday, 11 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. Saturday, 11 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. And Sunday, 11 to 7. Thank you. Okay. If I can ask a question to you, Steve, is, um, is there any reason not to approve it for the same kind of earliest time and latest time each day uh and just that's what's the what's approved and the establishment can you know decide when they close on a given night uh well generally the um the guidance with the hours is that they're supposed to actually reflect what's being okay. done um obviously though especially in recent years that has tended to change um quite a bit so um you know, if Mr. Berry anticipates, um, you know, they're very likely to to expand that shortly after opening. That's something that could be considered. Um, I wouldn't necessarily encourage that to uh, to just set it the maximum every night unless they think there's yeah. a, a good yeah. chance they'd be doing that. But good. Uh, Thank you. We've been doing so many of the food trucks where that that was our thinking that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I uh, appreciate you reminding us, especially on Sunday nights, if there's an event at the Drake they might want to be open past seven. So I would encourage perhaps a later 
opening. We request. would we would we would welcome, we would we would welcome that. Thank you, commissioners. We would welcome that. In Springfield, we do the exact same thing. We go from um, we go until eleven o'clock. Now we don't stay open to eleven unless it's a special event. On average, we close at nine, but we have that window of opportunity to go that extra hour or two if need be. So if we have the ability to go across the board at 1230 a.m., we would welcome that and accept it. And then if we have the uh, choice to shut down at 10 or if it's a slow day at mm -hmm. seven, we can we can work within those parameters. What is, is that all right, Steve? Or Well, it's a it's again kind of a bit of a poorly defined thing where you know they the ABCC cautions against that but clearly it's a thing that uh, many many establishments do and um, I don't think they would really consider that a violation in the sense yeah. that they would you know just being closed for two months or something um, right so I would probably leave that up to the discretion of the board yeah. okay Hallie and then Gaston well Gaston are you I can well, I, I, I was, hours. I have a separate question. So. Well, oh okay, yeah, for the hours. I was I was maybe thinking. I wonder if we could do like just a two two different, you know, kind of like a weekday closing of nine and a weekend of, you know, the twelve thirty. And but maybe it's Thursday to Sunday. I don't know. Maybe can you split it a way that seems that you're likely going to use, um, a good chunk of that gap. Uh, because I think Steve is right that we we should, you know, hew to what. Um, you're likely to be doing from time to time. Well, we've got like a, a variety. So Monday, Tuesday, 11 to nine, and then it goes to 11 for the next two days, right? Okay. And then Friday is 1230. Okay. So, so we then could... 11, maybe 11 and, and 1230. Like the, those are the two. Yeah, would that be fine? And then um, Saturday, Sunday, and then uh, Saturday already goes to 1230. So maybe Friday to twelve thirty as well. Yeah, yes. that's going to go. Yeah, that's going to go to twelve thirty. <laughs> yeah, Friday and Saturday twelve thirty, and then Sunday we you want maybe a, a little bit longer in case there's an evening event at the Drake. How long do those go? Yeah, I, I, I welcome that. There, yeah, there could be weekend events at the Drake or anywhere else down. I mean, you just never know what pops up during uh, the the course of uh, outdoor or uh, special programming. Off the okay. top of my head, I think Gabrielle intends that the Drake usually be closed by 10 30 or 11, but I could be wrong yeah. with that. Okay. Oh, so we could, yeah, go ahead. So, what if we do 11 across the board except for Friday and Saturday till 12 30? Does that, does that sound, does that sound reasonable? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely, and yes. then I have a question Are you set up to host private events? Is there a separate space or is that something you guys are considering or? Oh, I, I, absolutely. There will be an opportunity in time where folks or people or organizations will want to uh, either have a sliver of the space or all of the space available. And uh, we would work with them accordingly <clears throat> on what those logistics look like. Uh, we do it in Springfield. We welcome it in Amherst. It's a great way to showcase organizations that want to come out and support local business. And uh, I think I, I hope that that will happen also in the uh, in the town of Amherst. So to answer your question direct, there will be opportunity for that. Great. Okay. Great. Thanks. Guest on. So uh, thank you so much. One um, I guess issue I want to highlight because of the way we've adapted the uh, the times on the license is that we have a a pretty strict the food available at all times, alcohol is being served uh, policy in the town, and so I just want to point that out. That makes sense. So some food, uh, like we, even if it's fr French fries or, you know, if, if you just uh, plan that on the on the uh, kitchen staff, if you are going to be extending. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you for the okay. clarification. So do we settle on 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 11 a.m. to 1230 Friday and Saturday? Yes. OK, correct. All right. Great. Any other questions? If not, is there a motion to approve? Um, I would just say pending on. police chief's approval. We had a oh, pending couple of documents coming late to send to him. So okay, pending the uh, approval of the police chief, is there a motion to approve the new pouring license application for White Lion LLC DBA uh, White Lion Brewery, twenty four North Pleasant Street? So moved. Oh, thanks, Hallie. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Gaston. We'll take a, any further discussion. Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Hallie. 
Aye. Gaston. Aye. And um, I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent. The application is approved. The license is approved. Thank you so much. We look Thank forward you. to working with you and being part of this, the town of Amherst. Yeah. Thank you. you. Thanks much. a lot. You're Thanks welcome. for coming in. Best of luck. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so great, fantastic. Um, okay, on to the discussion topics. Um, so we've got four. So the first one is lunch cart food truck regulation, which we talked about a little bit last time. And this mostly with the idea that we're going to extend the um, regularly approved, standard approved uh, locations of lunch carts or food trucks in the town as uh, particularly over into the, maybe the Prey Street lot. Um, and Steve, you said you were talking to somebody? Were you talking to Rob about this? Yeah, so me and Rob did take a walk down onto Prey Street this week mm -hmm. to um, take a look at what, what sites might be, might be appropriate. Um, and um, it is a bit tight, but there's definitely some possibilities. You know, looking at the road, it's probably a bit too narrow to have them just on the side of the road, but um, there are some possibilities. I'll share my screen here with a map. Okay. Um, so this here is the Prey Street public lot. So that would be in the public way. Mm -hmm. um, and we have the street here, of course. Um, it looks like ideally the, the Prey Street lot would probably be maybe the best because um, it, uh, you know, it's obviously a little bit tucked in from moving vehicles and um, is, you know, centrally located with some other establishments that will be there, the Garcias and the Spoke and the Spoke Live. Um, would possibly add some um, some vitality area, maybe some other, you know, entertainment venues could open up in one of these buildings. Um, and, um, but the problem is, um, you know, that would, if we're going to guarantee there'd be spaces, it would involve, you know, probably blocking off some of the, some of the parking spaces. I don't know if that's necessarily possible um, on a weekly basis. Um, and um, I don't really know what the uh, occupancy of the parking lot is looking like every night. If it's empty, then that wouldn't really be a problem. But even if there's a few cars, if you had, you know, one, if they're all kind of poor, you know, badly spaced, you know, every four spaces or something that would might make it difficult for trucks to be able to get in. Um, so that's something we could explore um, potentially. Um, and then, you know, the other option over here might be, um, you know, this, these parking spaces are, kind of, as we kind of discovered with um, the Spoke Live, are kind of in a weird status where they're like 25% private and 75% public. Um, but um, that part is the public way. Yeah, they are controlled by the private, uh, the Jones Group owns those buildings. Um, but if they were um, interested, and um, Mr. O'Work did, did say that the, um, they were interested in the idea, and I haven't spoken to them specifically about this, this um, specific idea, but you know, possibly um, the trucks could go in these spaces um, if they were able to, to reserve them. And we took a look at the curbs here. They're uh, oddly high. They're probably maybe 18 inches above the ground. Um, so if the trucks were right up against the curb, that might be a bit too tall for, for people. You might be kind of almost looking down at the serving counter. Um, I don't know if that would necessarily work or not. Um, or you could have them maybe further out um, along the edge of the parking spaces with the service windows facing in, and that would give kind of a more sheltered and protected area for people to um, order their food and wait and eat. Um, so that may be an option looking around, you know, all over here it did look a little bit too tight. This is the Spokes private property, so that wouldn't be covered by this license. Um, so I don't know what uh, what you all think about that, but that was our the um, the, the uh, results of our little field trip. Um, and some other th good things to consider might be, um, you know, would this be a you know an area that's reserved only for you know nighttime hours on the weekends, or would this be something people could you know trucks could go to any time, um, you know, especially if there's kind of specific places reserved, be they in the parking lot or or in this this area here. That could, you guys can see my mouse, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. Or, um, or yeah, in this area here, then that would probably be, you know, it's not really anything that you could just um, pull up and expect to find spaces like you could over here. Um, so maybe some kind of hour restrictions would be, would be um, indicated. Um, and also the thing to be considered would be, are, are trucks just automatically allowed to go here? They have to ask permission to be in this, um, 
this kind of second tier of nighttime ones too. I think all things the board could consider. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Gaston. So I guess um, my first question is what what problem are we trying to solve or what opportunity are we trying to create? Because I'm I'm not sure where the mandate is coming from. I mean, I I, I like having more options for food trucks, but I guess it would help me to to understand that that question first. So if I remember correctly, this conversation came up out of discussions when we had the first nighttime food trucks, which was yeah. Mr. Romy Cantina, and there was ice cream emergency and right. um, fried right. chili. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Um, they did get the night approval for nighttime over here. And we were going to follow right. up with them at the next meeting, I believe. About being um, um, about how that had gone and um, you know the potential yeah. for complaints. And there was yeah. also some concerns about um, uh, you know, concerns about how most of the nighttime traffic is um, going to be in here. And you know, mm -hmm. some some coming down this road too from from these bars, but you know most people and having to cross the street could could possibly create a hazard at night. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think noise was the bigger concern, and in terms of opportunities, um, it can add a lot of uh, vitality to this area. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, if it if it becomes um, you know, more of an established thing, that might even induce some, um, you know, some redevelopment. Turnover. Maybe in in entertainment venues could go in yeah. here. I think this is yeah. like insurance agencies and things like that, realtor groups and. Um, yeah, I think they were, we were thinking about moving it away from the residential areas. I think there, I don't I think there are any residences near that pre state. Yeah. In the immediate yeah. vicinity, right? Okay. The nearest one would be here, I think. You're right, right, right. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, what based on your review, Steve, it seems that the ideal thing would be uh, to be able to block off some parking or to um, be able to have a evening space consistently available in some way and then the issue is whether what it takes to get that from the town of Amherst or from a private party is that is that how you see it I think so yeah I think that's probably about where it stands I mean in that case I I, I guess we should look both be opportunistic but also develop a view about where it seems most appropriate in given the lay of the land here my only concern is, you know, when you go kind of further away down Prey Street is there's not going to be a lot of foot traffic for these food trucks. Like Kendrick Park, I feel like people going back and forth yep. to UMass mm -hmm. are going to see things. But the Prey Street public lot and the street parking is kind of tucked, tucked in there. What's what's going on in the south corner of the of Prey Street at, at East Pleasant? That that parking lot there, yeah. Um, right there. This one right here. Yeah, that's a private property. Of whose? Um, I think this is, is a bank? bank, right? Yeah. Yeah, the bank. Oh yeah, that's that bank. Um, I mean, I, a a bank has the right hours to to um to fit with an evening food truck. Yes, it, it certainly does. Yeah. Um, um, I mean, they may or may not feel comfortable with that, um, but it does seem like the ideal first food truck on Prey Street. Yeah, and the spoke could potentially do it too. The if, if the spoke is open to it too, yeah, that's also yeah. a nice. That's that potentially has even more of a that little, would be like, better cool de sac yeah. feel. Right. Yeah, the the uh, yeah. the difficulty with the ones on private property is that it, it's outside of the board's jurisdiction, and the way to authorize it would be a zoning board special permit, um, which is um, a bit of a, but a we, bit more we of a could, difficult. Do, is there is there any kind of precedent or way to us try to get that pre-approved so that it's just like a check the box on the application? Well, I, I actually think it would be outside of the board's remit to regulate. It would be um, zoning. So we'd have nothing um, to do with it then, right? Well, yeah. we, well, it could be we we could we could um, I guess you I guess no because the only other thing left is the board of health. Yeah. So every every food truck has to has to go through the board of health process. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. if they want to only serve on private property, yeah. I mean, we do have some of those for Amherst College. We'll often have some yeah. to come in a couple of times. That's all they need to do. And they never yeah. come before the license commission. Okay. Well, and, I mean, um, this yeah. would be similar. Well, then I think um, you're you're serving uh, with the ZBA, aren't you, Steve? No, I was covering for a little while. Oh, you were but covering. I, okay. Yeah. But, you know, you, 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 uh, you have good relations over there. I mean, uh, could we just try to point the owner of the spoke in that direction? 
that that's certainly something that could be done yeah yeah and um rob had the interesting idea of spitballing of if the board could you know would have the ability to regulate private ways as well um i don't mm -hmm. necessarily know if that would obviate zoning or if that would even be lawful or if um or if uh that would um be something that works but it was an interesting thought I mean, that is in that case, you could have you would have then have the case that every every you know food truck that goes to Amherst College or whatever would need to to register. But um, sometimes they, sometimes they'll get you know three different ones in a semester, and sometimes they won't. But um, it's an interesting thought anyway. Well, well, I mean, I guess we, we're in a position to uh, try to stimulate this activity, and and in at least in recommending that if we can send the message to this spoke owner, but. To go further in, into what we're in a position to do, then the question is, what would it take to, um, who would have to approve part of the parking lot being dedicated to another use or having some time restriction on it? Well, I can reach out. We were, I was talking about that with Rob as well, and um, we went out there yesterday morning, and um, you know, he suggested starting with the police department, who I can reach out to. The DPW may also have uh, have yeah. thoughts on it, and just really see if that's possible. I mean, I'm, I'm personally going to try to just. Um, take a look on the weekend nights this week um, and see see yeah. what the volume is looking like if it's, if it's completely jam-packed um, or if it's you know there's five in the cars evening. in there or something yeah 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 I mean, yeah. It, yeah yeah okay that's good that's thank a great you for next doing step that. yeah thanks steve and if thank anybody else just... happens to see while they're driving by as well yeah right. i'll keep my eye out as well i mean and then the other question i have is just what is the safest I think we should start small and just try to get one 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 additional spot through the process and and get that one filled before we go further. What so what's the ideal? I mean, I guess the question for the police chief would be what what does he think is the safest um, from his point of view, but also from from your point of view, Steve and, and Rob. Well, I think um, I think the Prey Street lot would probably be the safest. I mean, I guess it kind of depends how we have it set up because if um. You know, if the trucks are, you know, maybe here facing this way, I mean, there's kind of a grass, a kind of a semi uh, unmowed grass median here that uh, might be, you know, difficult for people to walk over. If you have them facing in this way, then, or a very, you know, in front to back, then maybe there could be other cars backing around unless you have a bigger section blocked off. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's something to, um, to think about. Um, there could be, on the other hand, if you had them here, you could have the truck on the inside on the, you know, you know, I would imagine kind of right lined up along the end of the of the striping with the serving window facing in. If you had a couple of those, I mean, that would create a pretty decently um, protected space where cars driving by would have to go through the truck before they hit anybody. Right. Um, well, can we look at, can you look into both of those? Like just Yeah, so that would be my next step is contacting right. the, the property owner for those, that fraction of the space and the police department at DPW. Okay. Well, and here's a brainstorm. What if the Prey Street lot was just closed off whenever, for the time period we do the extended food truck licenses and that becomes sort of the food truck park where we encourage everyone serving after 8 p.m. to park there. If we can act fast enough, I mean, if, if we'll see, can we, let's see where it works out, but then, yeah, I think that may, might make sense because the other- You know, that might be worth changing away yep. from Kendrick Park, because we're which is more residential and just saying, okay, this is our, and then that becomes maybe a late night destination. Yeah, I think I think that could be a nice idea. I mean, I think the challenge with that would be is just ma managing those, um, the fact that that's blocked off um, because you could put up signs, you know, the parking lots closed. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think, this is something I haven't paid all that much attention to in the past, but when I think about, you know, when they have to close off, um, you know, the Spring Street lot for the farmer's market or for events they do yeah. there. I mean, I think they have to put up signs saying it's going to be closed, um, you know, at, at other, uh, you know, on this day and some cars will stay there and some of them end up having to be towed. And, um, you know, maybe if enough of them leave, you wouldn't have to tow the ones there, but then their yeah. cars are going to be stuck in there for the duration of the event. Uh, yeah, uh, it's just, a, you know, if, if it, it becomes popular enough, maybe it's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday night. Yeah, I think that could That's be a really nice and a really nice place to be eventually. Yeah. Hey Dylan. Hey Dylan. Um, hello everybody. 
we're actually you're, you you came in when we need you most because we're, time, oh, right. we're we're talking about <laughs> can you see the the the, the map here we're talking yep. about the that's Prey Street parking lot. We're talking about where to put, uh, where we could potentially put some more food trucks or have an area where food trucks could potentially go to. Ah, uh, so we're thinking yeah. about doing it in the the Prey Street parking lot rather than yes. doing it along the uh, the road. Or uh, uh, maybe or along. Point See, it out you... Yeah. Yeah. But, so the, the I took or, a walk down there with Rob the other day. Um, and we notice it does look a little bit too narrow, pretty much all along the length of it to just fit them on the side of the road. Uh, the two mm -hmm. options we identified was maybe that, you know, these spaces are, you know, strangely 75% public space and 25% private, but they are controlled by the private businesses. Um, and potentially if that, those, um, those landowners gave permission, we could have them, you know, lined up here or here somewhere and, and facing in. And people, you know, at the edge of the um, the striping facing in, so there'd be a space here for people to congregate. This the sidewalk here is um, strangely elevated, like 18 inches, so it might be too high to serve right to the sidewalk. But you could have a kind of protected area formed by trucks along the edge here. And the other option would be the Prey Street parking lot, um, but that could, you know, have challenges <laughs> of closing it off and removing vehicles if they're there. And one question we had is how full that lot tends to be on weekend nights, which you you may know. Um, believe it or not, I actually have no idea. I, I never go and look at that, uh, at that parking lot at night. Um, but I'll, I'll go keep an eye on it now. I can check that out. Um, so where are we at? Where, where are we, are we voting on making this a food truck area? No, 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 we no. About no. Right now? We're just talking about it and Steve's going to go talk to the police chief or whoever at there about the parking and what it would take to maybe either block it off or reserve it to some spaces in the area. Steve, I mean, can I, can I just I was just gonna say you? I could go go ahead guess them. Go, go no, ahead. if you could just put up the the Google Map satellite view, I think it's I just looked at it and I, I think it'll help us a little bit. Yeah. Google Maps always thinks I'm in Holyoke for some reason. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Dylan. Good. I, I like the little nook um, in that Prey Street parking lot on the right that's empty in this picture where people could stand on the grass to order. Here? Yeah. 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 That and that would nice. be easy to, that would be more contiguous to block off for one truck. Yeah. What um what is our authority on parking lots, if if any? To I mean, block them off? I mean none really, but we could work with yeah. other stakeholders to uh to to make it happen. Got it. Uh, that is the town lot, right? You have to pay the yeah. for that one, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, why don't we look into that little corner right there? Why don't yeah, we start we there? Also, we were also next um, next meeting going to have the food trucks come for a um, kind of a check in on how how it's been going at okay. the uh, the Kendrick Park place, so we can have some follow up maybe from that. Okay, that sounds good. So, right. So, can you ask about that spot for starters? Yes, I will ask about. I'll, I'll ask about these and and. These and then, spots and these ones. And then maybe we can get a report from various various people on the um, the parking, overnight parking, late night parking status, habits, practices of Prey Street lot. Just yeah, so we're, what we're dealing uh, with. Dylan, you're also downtown, live downtown. If you can kind of give some visual reports on how how it looks at night. I uh so, so far I've only seen um the taco truck uh, there late at night. I haven't seen anybody else show up. Um, 
but it's looked like anytime I've walked by at night, which hasn't been too late into the evening, it's uh, they've usually got a couple people there. So I think they're getting at least a steady flow. Um, I haven't had a chance to check in with the folks who live across the street from there to get the idea of noise, but I mean, kind of seeing it like there, there's definitely not zero. It's quiet, but, but not nothing. Um, okay. So I, I do like the idea of, I think that area, those, we were uh, talking over at ZBA about, because uh, we just approved the special permit for the spoke live over there as well. One of the, the major discussions is going to be about noise and you know that's supposed to have it's a 70 decibels at the property line uh once all the mitigation is in place like doors but as that door is open it's going to be loud there and i kind of think if you're living in the section of downtown where you're with the nightclubs i think you expect some level of noise and i i think the uh the food trucks will definitely be quieter than the bars so i right. think that area is definitely a much better area for food trucks if we can make it happen okay great all right, super. Um, so what's next? So Steve, you will look into that. Yeah, I'll look into both those order. locations and see okay. what might be possible. Maybe try to check in with um night shift police officer who might have a sense of what things are generally looking like down there. And, and okay. Uh, and yeah, we can check in at the next meeting and we'll invite the uh, the food trucks to see if they will come in and talk about their experiences. All right, that would be awesome. Dylan, I think you got here after Steve explained that um, even though the spoke parking lot is, you know, has a lot of good features for a food truck, that it would have to go through ZBA. It would have, maybe. Um, if there, if spoke is operating through a special permit, it would have to go through ZBA, yeah. Is that the case? Is the original spoke operating yeah. through a uh, special permit? I don't know if the original original one was, but it's ex been extended twice to include the additional area it now has in that in that building. So yeah, it definitely is under a special permit. Got it. Um, yeah, I, I, I well, I can't imagine something like that would be uh, you know insurmountable to 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 get before the CBA. Um, typically, you know, we we want food to be available to people who are drinking, so. Um, I think there's other reasons. I can't remember what they were, but I remember uh, hearing there's like other reasons why they wouldn't want uh, food trucks there as a business, but I, I don't have much more on that um, other than it just being kind of a hassle to do it. So I'm not sure that the spoke would want a, uh, a food truck on their property. Not that they don't want one to be there, but I don't think that they want it operating on, on their property because they think they're still liable for something. I'm not entirely sure how that works. Okay. Yeah, All right, great. I well, that's something- that a bit further as well. Okay, but that's like a little more into the future than just, then that, that's a step after the next one. So, okay, great. Any other questions about this? Nope. All right. Um, so next is lunch rental regulations. Is that right? And for that, um, we were waiting on Mandy Johanneke. She was gonna check with uh, the lawyer she's working with, but um, she has not heard back from the lawyer. Um, uh, so, and there's going to be a delay. She said, Paul, there's gonna be a delay due to all of the annual town meetings going on in the state. So um, I'll just check in with her before our next meeting and see if she has heard anything from uh, her lawyer, the lawyer that they're working with. Um, before we can go forward anymore with that topic. Um, and then after that, we have adult use marijuana, which is something uh, Doug isn't here, but I think we can talk a little bit about this because uh, Steve and I were chatting earlier in the week about uh, maybe having more than one perspective on these regulations. And um, Steve, you had an idea that there might be like a subcommittee or we could either, yes. yeah, so, write to each other through Steve. Yeah, so so just to kind of follow up on, on this in general, so I think we kind of <laughs> had tabled this uh, when license renewal season kicked off. Um, as things were getting very busy, and it's been a very busy spring as well with, um, I think at one point we had seven active liquor license applications, which I don't think yes. we've ever had more than three before. So um, 
we're finally getting a little bit more time now, and um, it's probably a good idea, a good time to get back into this. I have spoken to the town manager and the finance director, and um, with the changes to the law around host community agreements, um, they are open to the idea of um, marijuana licensing potentially covering most or all of what host community, home host community agreements do now. Um, so that gives the board um, a pretty wide remit to to regulate those businesses. Um, and um, I think it's uh, obviously a very important subject, something we'd be um, blazing the trail on in Amherst. And um, you know, Doug's prepared a um, a very good draft so far, but um, you know, I think it's something that could definitely use some some more intensive focus. So um, yeah, as you know, with the open meeting law, if um, you know, I believe more than two members are discussing something um, relevant to um, the uh, you know business of the board, they do need needs to be a posted public meeting. So. Um, one idea could be to to form an actual subcommittee that with posted meetings to kind of um, meet more regularly to go over this, or we could just um, you know do as we as we usually do with talking about it in meetings and um, reviewing and you know sending back comments through me to to send to each other. Um, but I uh, sent along the um, the regulations as the draft stood um, in September last time we we took a look at it, and um, I think our next step in terms of working on it would be to start sending some questions to KP Law. Um, about what um, you know is possible, how to structure it, if there's any examples and things like that. So um, I did send it along to everybody, and I think it um, you know start out now at least we could be very helpful for for everybody to go through it, and maybe just send me some thoughts. Um, I think as it, as it left, there was a few comments I had made when I reviewed it, but I could certainly give it another look once over too, and um, we can maybe kind of um, you know you know set our first goals as um, identifying some questions to ask, and and then maybe starting to think about how to how to structure it. Okay. Uh, Sounds good. Qu yeah. Uh, question. Dylan. Yes, Dylan. Um, the uh, so when we when we get this, uh, essentially it's it's the host community agreement, and we can essentially modify the host community agreement. Is am I understanding that correct? So the host community agreement is kind of a unique thing that was just created by the marijuana law, where the marijuana businesses have to enter. Um, said host community agreement with the town it's more of a contract it's not a license mm -hmm. um and there has been some there was some uh some towns in other parts or cities in other parts of the state that uh use this um in maybe not the most ethical way and uh i think there was some in a reconsideration of the program in general and the most recent marijuana um, law passed by the legislature um kind of pared down what would be possible with those and then there was also you know i think less less adverse impacts than had been anticipated at first but the um the first um the um yeah the uh the legislature has kind of pared back what's possible with them um and um, i think you know towns are starting to take the the view um at least this town that maybe we'd be better served with a license that's the same as um as the license we give to every other business rather than this kind of strange unique host community agreement um so one of the questions we'll have for the lawyers is can the host community agreements be completely eliminated um or do we have to have some kind of very you know de minimis host community agreement with most of the regulations still covered in licensing um but um this yeah this would be replacing or you know substantially or maybe less replacing those community agreements, but it would be separate okay. yeah question. um yeah oh sorry go ahead dylan no go ahead get some no, guess uh, and my just question do, do you know what the termination date is on the agreements uh, by chance, Steve. Um, I think we, I think that we have several different businesses and they're rolling. I don't think it's all on the same date. I think we had one that's expiring this summer, and um, they they're okay. all rolling, so I don't know. Okay. Okay. So what happens when they expire? Does it they just resign it, or do they negotiate another one? Or um, I guess you could do either. I don't know what they're intending to do this summer. I mean, I think um, I think the bulk of them are maybe coming up for resigning this fall, so or okay. winter, so we'd be trying to get ahead of that. Uh, I think they're for a multi-year term. Uh, oh, okay. And another right. advantage that a license would offer over those is that, um, you know, licenses can have disciplinary action taken against them, but the host community agreement is kind of just very more rigid. Okay. All right. The, um, uh, the host community agreement, uh, Steve, would you be able to, or maybe you sent it in the pack and I just didn't look, do we have what the host community agreement currently says? They, I believe they are unique for each business. I'm sure there's a template yeah. that they're kind of following. I don't have an example of them, but I can try to get one for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, 
could could we request just the host community agreement for for every shop that we have in town? I'd like to kind of see what we got in there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the um, because I know you could, and I, I remember when I was dealing with uh one of those. I think it was a uh, red cardinal on the ZBA. Uh, I remember uh, Tom Reedy, who was representing them, had mentioned how we are uh, the town gets some portion of revenue, which I don't think is the case with um, with bars. Is is wh wh how does that one work? I think about it. Maybe I should have an answer to that, but. How does that work, Steve? Like, now that I'm saying it, I actually don't know the answer to that. The answer is no. Am I correct? Yeah, we don't get a portion. We don't get a portion. Licenses, but the uh, yeah. I think the, the amendment to the legislation substantially reduced that. So a host community agreement can't ask for, like, a percentage of revenue? I believe – I don't know the exact details. I think it used to be much more expansive, and now the changes have made it um, – you know, much more narrowly tailored. I think there's a lower cap, and um, you know, I think I think that everybody has seen kind of less uh, impacts than we're at, expected at first. And now, I believe the the HC the, the HCAs can't um, you know, they have to spend everything they take on. You know, it has, it has to be you know directly related to what um, impacts the business has. And um, we're not really seeing many impacts in Amherst, so. Okay, great. So um, is there anything else on this for this week? Otherwise, we'll uh, go over the regulations, as Steve suggested, start to ask questions, um, maybe discuss about how we want to discuss this. Is that what are just before we go, what are people's thoughts on a, a subcommittee that is posted? Or would you rather just do this the way we've been handling um, it, which is um, I mean, uh, you know, if we're talking about if we're talking about meeting, let's say an, an hour every, you know, between every meeting for a couple of meetings and and trying to get something going, um, right? I'm willing to, uh, I'm willing to volunteer. Yeah, it might it might go faster. Is my thinking if you had a kind of a targeted subcommittee, um, and then one other person on it. I mean, I'd, I'd like to be on the subcommittee, but right. I just don't know time-wise. Um, I mean, it's technically possible for all, all five of us to be on the subcommittee if we wanted to, right? It's just it is, speaking right. of that one issue. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'd I'll i be on the either subcommittee or just our special meeting time if, if that's what it has to be. But um, we could do if that it's going to be a... But yeah, if it's going to be a dedicated subcommittee, there there would have to be, uh, I think, at least four of us, because I, I don't think I could necessarily commit to to every meeting at, at different times, because my schedule is a little hectic right now, as you see from me showing up at uh, 545. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, uh, I mean, what about uh, just, I, I hadn't thought of Steve's idea of doing kind of a subcommittee of the whole or something like that. We mm -hmm. could just meet every week. And every other week, it's only on this topic, and it's open. Anyone can join, but it's like a, a working on the topic. I don't know. Yeah, I like that that's, idea. That's I like idea. that. Yeah. Um, what time? I guess. Uh, what time? Does, Dylan, does evening work better for you? I, it, it's it's all up in the air. I have appointments either okay. at eleven a.m., three p.m., or six p.m., and they can go as late as about three hours each. So okay, it's, uh, all right. So we just have to schedule something. So maybe we can get, um, what was your thing, your scheduling program, Steve? What is that called? Um, oh, the, oh, the, the uh, I guess we don't need that. If this slot, if, if, if this just, slot works for people, we could just do, you know, just, we all know every Thursday at five, we've got a meeting for, for a couple of weeks, for a couple of months or something. I think that, that works. That is that the best solution? Okay. All right, should we do that? Sounds good. Then so, we have to notice it to the public, right? right? Yeah. So when do we want to start next week? If we have all the materials, so we want materials in the packet. We have the regu the draft regulations, and then we want the host community agreements. Do we just want to start with the draft regulations, and then as soon as Steve can dig out those, yes, Gaston, go ahead. I, I would say the first, the first, the first extra Thursday after we can get the host community agreements. I think that will really simplify. We can kind of decide. What do we want to 
take from the host community agreement and what do we want to add to it? It'll, I think it'll help all our conversation. Okay. Does that sound good? Okay. All right. So Steve, you can find those. And as soon as you send those around, we will start meeting. Awesome. All okay, right. Great. Yeah. And if you guys um, can get a chance to review them in the meantime and start formulating some questions for the attorneys. Okay, super. And can you tell, can you send Doug, shoot Doug an email of? Yeah. Sort of well, and Steve, that. do you have to be at these meetings? I, I don't want to like add extra, an extra Thursday meeting for you to have to set up and host. If you don't have to be there, do you want to give Marion the power to start the Zoom? Yeah, I don't actually have to be there i guess I'd right. really i mean not, not that you're not probably not that you're not wanted yeah. but you know <laughs> you, you work long hours so if you need a break don't feel like you have to yeah. come along for the ride every other thursday too Does yeah that'd need... be much appreciated but um I... we can see how how it plays out i guess does somebody okay. have to take minutes for this? Do they have? Do those have to be posted? Every every public meeting has to take minutes, to and that would that minutes. would certainly be a help be a help for me. So okay. Um, a question for you, Steve, because I know on ZBA we just recently started doing minutes again, because uh, I, I think our the sense was that the recording and posting of the video technically counted as minutes. Is that uh is that not the case? And ZBA has just been doing it wrong for. Three years? No, the minutes um, still do have to be officially mm -hmm. prepared. So I do have oh, a big wow. batch of them. Um, I do take them in every meeting and then I don't always get to finish them. So I have a big batch of them with like, you know, five typos and without the formatting in them. So um, I'm trying to get more caught up on that. But we do have minutes for every meeting, <laughs> just not all approved. Okay, great. All right, anything else on this topic? No updating upcoming meetings and agendas. So we're waiting on rental registration regulations until we hear back from Mandy Johanneke. Um, we're waiting on adult use until we get the host community agreements. Um, next time is next time we is our hopefully our meeting of lunch cart. Oh, it may. So it's June first, right? Yeah, I think that's what so we were shooting for. Right, June 1st, the lunch cart people come in to talk about their experience in and around Kendrick Park. And we talk, uh, Steve, you'll be, hopefully have some feedback about the Kendrick Park, I mean, the, the Prey Street parking lot. Was there anything else we wanted to put on for that meeting? Oh, well, I guess we'll figure it out in, in case something else comes up. Um, okay, topics not anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. Any topics? Uh, yes. Next meeting, or we can just email Steve uh, the summer vacation schedules. Right. Yes, summer vacation schedules. Okay. Send your summer plans to Steve. And I probably won't invite door. myself. Okay. <laughs> College tours. I mean, come on, Steve. Um, It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Um, any more topics? Nope. Um, review of minutes. Did we have minutes today? Not today. Okay, great. And we come to adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thanks, Dylan. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Uh, we'll take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Gaston. Aye. Hallie. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. We're adjourned at 6.05 p.m. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good um, evening. See you next time. Bye. Thank you all. All right. Thanks, Steve. Yeah.